So we started with an introduction. Um, the main point is that an important thing that we're going to be doing is estimating uh, a parameter in your in your population. So in this case, um, let's say that we flip a coin and we see that um, if we flip it 100 times that it lands heads 45 times. And so in this case, the relevant parameter is the proportion of heads that you have or the probability of getting um, that your that your coin lands heads. Um, so a natural estimator for this is the proportion in your sample uh, of times that it lands heads. So in this case, um, we have 45 out of 100. And <clears throat> so uh, information that we often give um, with an estimator is a confidence interval, um, which basically tells you about the variability um, around that around that estimator. Because keep in mind that every time you perform this experiment, um, where you uh, say flip a coin a hundred times, you're going to get possibly different values for um, for the number of heads. So we want to know basically so forty five. Uh, is what we got as our estimator how um, you know how uh, what's the spread of values that you get if you if you do this experiment again and again so um, in this situation um, uh, we can think of we have a box a zero one box and um, x1 to x100 is our draws from this box the proportion um, or sample proportion is just the sample average, which turns out to be 0.45. This is an unbiased estimator of P, which just means that um, it's uh, the expectation of your of your random variable um, P hat is is P. So that's a a property of of the sample mean that we will will see soon. So, um, so an important concept is that of the sampling distribution. So, p hat is a random variable, and so it has a distribution of different values that it can take. Um, so, this is usually some theoretical th uh, thing um, because the central limit theorem. Um, um, applies in this situation. Uh, we know that the distribution is going to be approximately normal and the center will be the expected value of p hat which is p. And we need to find um, what the SD is for the sampling distribution and we call that the standard error. So um, so uh, the variance which is the standard deviation squared. The variance is given by, um, by the formula here. Um, so, or rather I should say p hat, is, p hat is given by this formula here. So the variance of that, um, you can just pull out the constant as one over 100 squared. And then um, the variance because these xi's are all independent of one another, um, the variance just distributes into the sum. And furthermore, all these xi's have the same variance because we're just drawing from the same box. So uh, these xi's are all independent, identically distributed random variables. And so this is just 100 times the variance of, say, x1, or just x. So. Um, <clears throat> so we have a formula, the variance of our estimator is just the variance of x over 100. And now, um, in this situation, we know that x is, Ber is Bernoulli p, or binomial 1p. And we know the formula for the variance of that. It's just p times 1 minus p. And the distribution, I mean, the, yeah, so basically... We don't know what p is, but we know that p is. We know that p times one minus p is less than a quarter because um, because I can graph p 
times 1 minus p, and I get this arc here. And it's the maximum value occurs when p is 1 half. So, so I know that I'm going to get um, the variance is going to be less than a quarter, and I can use that as a conservative estimate for the standard error then to get 0 0.05. And so this thing gives me a conservative estimate for, say, a 99% confidence interval. Um, the, the formula for a confidence interval, as we'll see in the second hour, is just given by this formula. Um, you have your estimator, plus or minus the 99.5% uh, the quantile, in this case. Um, um, times the standard error of p hat. So, so that's all good. Um, this 0 0.005 here is a, is I'm writing this as a, um, as an index here. Uh, there's, I probably could write it also as z of 0 0.005, um, but in any case. Uh, so that turns out to be 2.6. So you can just check that that um, the 0.995 quantile of the standard normal curve is 2.6, or I think it's 2.57. You can check that in R, or you can just use a lookup table. Um, so so here we here we get the 99% uh, confidence interval. And um, there's also uh, a different um, confidence interval you can get called the bootstrap confidence interval, um, in which case uh, for the SE, um, we're going to use the, our estimate for, for the parameter P um, in, in the formula for, <clears throat> in our formula for the standard deviation. So uh, the formula for this for the standard error or the standard deviation of the sampling distribution um, is is given here. Um, and we're sticking in p hat instead of p. And in this case, we get something very close to the conservative estimate. So we get uh, we get a different but very close um, confidence interval. Uh, so usually you would use a conservative estimate of the confidence interval if, if you can if you can give that. Otherwise, you would use a uh, just a, a bootstrap estimate because the conservative estimate um, is usually not possible. So let's summarize. So we have been talking about a, a dichotomous case. So this is a, a zero one box. P is the proportion of ones in your box. Um, we're drawing a sample of size N, uh, which we call X1 to Xn, from a box with N zeros and ones. Um, our estimator is just the, um, it's just the, the sample average. And our bootstrap SE um, is given by this formula, and the conservative SE is given by, by this formula. Um, so all that was done drawing with replacement. If you draw without replacement, this is what's commonly called a simple random sample, or SRS. And now you have a correction factor, um, which we will prove uh, soon. Um, and this thing to note here is that if um, if capital N, your population, is much greater than your sample size, then the correction factor is essentially 1. And in that case, drawing with and without replacement is equivalent. Um, so I asked you to do an example just to make this very concrete for you. So you have a, a box uh, with five tickets in it, four zeros and one one. So right away you know that the proportion of ones is one-fifth. And you also know that the variance um, of your box is 4 over 25. We're drawing two 
without replacement from this. And I've asked you to basically um, write out concretely what's the sampling distribution, find the mean and variance of that sampling distribution and compare it with, with theory, basically what we have done above. And so, well, there are five choose two ways to, to draw two out of a box of five. So that's 10. And I, here I've listed them all and computed the um, fraction of ones in that sample. And so you see that you get six, you get six of your samples um, where p hat is zero and four where it's um, a half. So that gives us uh, the sampling distribution here. And uh, you can compute the expectation of this distribution just in the normal way um, to get a fifth. So that, that represents the center of your data. And the variance is, um, is just the formula that you should have seen in, in a probability class the expectation of p hat squared minus expectation of p hat quantity squared, which is 0 0.06 in this case. Um, and you can check this with theory just using this formula, um, the, variance, the variance of p hat is indeed um, 0 0.06 using the, the correction factor given here. So um, we then took a break and then sort of got into the book. So um, the first section, like 7.3.3, um, uh, that we're going to talk about, um, uh, I'm discussing now. So there's, there's a certain amount of stuff in 7.3 that we don't really need. I'm going kind of quickly and picking out just stuff that we need from from this chapter because uh, we could spend a lot of time here, but we won't get a lot of rewards. So I'm, I'm we're moving quickly. Um, so here the we're we're treating the the important case where the sampling distribution is normal, um, which wasn't the case in this previous example here, where um, because we were drawing just two. Um, the, the central limit theorem doesn't really kick in. So, but here, here we're going to assume 